G'day folks. Uh, this is a little video for uh, Billy from LostTreasure.com.au uh, YouTube name LostTreasure.com.au uh, Links in the description. I know I've done a video earlier about the marble bottle that I have. That's a uh, cooperative MW Co Adelaide. It's a proper marble bottle. Um, you might see a modern variant in the background there. That's just a um, Japanese Ramoon bottle. It's a great soda pop and still uses the original design but with a plastic cap. The marble's the stopper, you've got to push the marble in for it to work. Um, but I thought I'd get some more of my collection out of storage at Mum's place and have a bit of a closer look at it. Uh, some of it I've found, some of it I haven't. I think that one was found, I can't really remember. That's a proper uh, football bottle. It's uh, made in Belfast by Ross's. That's the only marking that's on it. Ross's Belfast. It's a multi-piece bottle, blow moulded and a separately applied top, just like a lot of these. That one there, that one there with the internal threads. That one. There was a lot of finishing work involved in bottle making back then. Unlike today where everything's fully automatic and they crank out several hundred per, well, half an hour. Literally, like, there's a couple of bottles coming out every second. Bottle making back then was a fairly laborious task. You can see this sausage bottle has a seam and a separately applied top as well. And that's a Hall & Sons Norwood. I don't know exactly what would have been in these. Maybe oil or something like that. Food oil, like olive oil. Um, spirits, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, I found that on a job site, just digging along the back fence. They'd run a backhoe through and there are a lot of little medicine bottles and stoppers and things. It's got the AGM stamp on it from the 1940s era, so it's fairly old. It's not exactly a valuable collectible, like there's still a lot around, but ones like this, which would have had a glass stopper, are a bit more valuable. It's T.E. Cooper from Mitchell Street, Bendigo. If any of my friends in Bendigo know, Mitchell Street's obviously probably could still, still be there, but there was a uh, chemist many years ago. It's a big M on the bottom of it. Probably Melbourne Glassworks stamp. AGM, I think it's just an advanced version of the um, Melbourne Glassworks stamp. And that one there, that's a PEX paste jar. I don't know what PEX paste was, but I'm guessing it's like a food spread or something like that. This one's particularly old. This was originally would have had a cork or glass stopper in it. Uh, it's not even straight, like the bottle itself has a bend in it. And again, it's got a large C and something across the bottom of it. Very old. The top's chipped up, but still intact. There's a random glass stopper. I don't think it's for this one. I think I just found this in a riverbed one day on holiday. Or maybe the root system of an upturned tree, a bulldozed tree. Up near Cairns, or actually north of Cairns, at a caravan park. They'd have been expanding and just bulldozing trees. And I was just walking along and I saw a bunch of these and some old medicine bottles and things sticking out, or ink, ink bottles, the old inkwell bottles sticking out. So I just ratted through it for a couple of hours and pulled out a heap of stuff. I don't know where it went. A lot of, I've given a lot of stuff away over the years, but I've still got some old stoppers and little ink bottles and things somewhere. Uh, Dowman Co. Melbourne. Uh, what's this? Essence Coffee and Chicory. I've got no idea what coffee and chicory would taste like, or even if it's actually a consumable, but it's interesting. And again, it's a two-piece bottle, lots of little air bubbles and flow marks through it. It's got a nice blue colour too. The colouring like that is due to minerals in the glass. This would have had a lot of manganese in it. I believe it's manganese that makes them go purple. Uh, this would have originally been clear when it came out of the uh, factory. Maybe a slight green tinge like these ones, but the manganese has just gone completely nuts in the presence of ultraviolet light up on a power pole and they go purple. It's just like leaving some of the old bottles you find out in the uh, in the scrub. They've been sitting up on the ground for so long the manganese has turned the glass purple. Some of them go very pearlescent because of other dirty contaminants in the glass. Uh, there's loads of things. I haven't been bottle digging for ages but there's a site nearby, an old dam, which backed onto the original pub in the 1870s to I think just after World War I when they pushed it over and built a pub on Main Street. Now I'm going to go digging in there in the next probably day or two if not next week 
but I know it's been used as a dumping ground for car parts and other junk over the decades, so I don't expect to get very far because apparently there's a lot of scrap dumped in the old dam. But it was the stable's watering hole behind the local pub for that era, 18, 1870s or 1880s onto 1918 or 1919. So there should be some goodies under that level. If I can get deep enough to get in there, it'll work. But they want to push over and fill the area in in the coming years, so I want to get in there quick. Uh, Vickery's Emulsion, that's an old um, ceramic um, bottle. Would have had a big cork stopper or something in it. And the old Marchant's bottles. These are everywhere in Australia. You'll find them everywhere because these would have had cordial or soft drink in them. I think with the internal threaded plugs, this probably would have had lemonade or something in it. Yeah, remains property of Marchant's. These are re refillable bottles, like the ones you used to pick up at the servo for 50 cents each, and you take the bottle back and get a refund, and they'd be full of lemonade or Coca-Cola or something like that. I used to go down to um, the service station near school and buy a bottle on the way home, and they were similar. They'd have a screw cap on them, not quite this big and heavy, but you, um, I think you paid 75 cents for the bottle of drink, and when you took it back, you got 25 cents back. So as long as you kept returning the bottles, you'd get a whole litre of soft drink, nice tasting cheap soft drink for like 50 cents. It was really good but they don't do that anymore because no one bloody returns bottles these days. That's sort of why they end up here like that one. I found that in the scrub. But yeah, these, these old um, football bottles are quite interesting. I think it would have originally had a stand, sort of like a lab flask or a, I guess like a Bunsen burner stand that you just sort of sit it in. Maybe even a crudely turned wooden stand something they just turn up on the wood lathe and it just sit there like that but yeah something like olive oil or something like that they had in, in them anyway that's enough rambling this video is coming a bit longer than I thought but who cares old stuff's fun forget about new stuff like computers and plasma TVs that stuff will be dead and buried long before any of this stuff even begins to decay I mean keep it in keep it in a museum and this sort of stuff will be around forever but yeah, I want to find one of these. Wouldn't surprise me in the least if there's a couple of them buried in that dam where the old pub used to be. They would have had soft drinks and that's what this was for. This would have had lemonade or something like that in it. Lemon squash, ginger beer, who knows. Oh, well, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for old relics and things like that. Old bottle dumps, things like that. Um, bits of broken glass on the ground around an old area is usually a sign of an old dump. And if you dig deep enough, you can sometimes come up with some goodies like this. Oh, take care, guys and girls. Thanks for watching.